Joker. They are going to play very aggressive, so I think the aggressor will be paid off this game. I think Virtus Pro are going to look to try to bounce back and take this to a three-game stretch. We're really going to see, though, if that's going to be the case or not. Let's go ahead and send it over to our casters now. It's going to be Merlini and Mr. Odie Pixel. Gentlemen, take it away. <laughs> Something that we see every day. Zeus is back. I see it's going to be an interesting one. Obviously, Secret uh, kind of sticking with what they worked in the first game the fact that they're running misery yet again on the slaughter. They're keeping Envy on his gyro. Paladai picking up the Undying. So, seeing some kind of repercussions from the first game. And will they smoke up onto G? This is not the way the Invoker wanted to start his match off. And first blood there for the mid laner. We are picking that up for the side. As well as I. Um, well, they may just see if they can find more here. Puppy is yet to skill. Surfy, maybe you can get the vision for the goods, but nah, it looks like it's not going to happen. But nonetheless, a great way there for the side of Secret to start the game off, getting that kill onto the Invoker. And I mean, why the Invoker this game? Why do you feel the VP have picked this up for this matchup? It's kind of maybe to dissuade the Meepo pick, as well as just giving them maybe a little bit more global presence. They really seemed to lose out on their lanes the last game, and with... Sunstrike, perhaps they can uh, kind of alleviate that, but th this early game is already really bad for them. They wasted two TPs, one on top, one on bottom. They didn't scatter out any wars, and they gave up the first blood, and as as well as one of the runes. So we already see the bottle on the Zeus. Zeus kind of fell out because all the mid laners could just dump on him in the mid lane, but with Invoker, Invoker is like decently strong, but not as hard to deal with as like a Lestrak from 6.84 or a Queen, let's say. So actually, Queen's a pretty good matchup for Zeus, but most of the lane dominators are out, so he can actually survive in lane and get some good farm. Okay, and in terms of obviously like uh, the lineup here for the side of VP, the fact that we're seeing Illidan again bringing back that Venge carry, something that we do see him do kind of in the odd occasions, and it's going to be very nice in this lane here with Lil going to make it that hard for Misery to get that XP out and well. Top lane, Snowball's actually going to come out here onto Jaro. Rocket Barrage has already been down, so they'll just be able to force back Phobos here. Uh, so just go, okay, they've got a the glimpse onto Phobos. This man might be a dead man. The Rocket Barrage again, bringing Phobos slow. He tries to tango himself through the trees. That's a second kill here for Secret. And that did for not you. look like that was 600 range. This thing's supposed to be 600 range. <laughs> I don't know how he pulled that off. Oh, on the straight D ward there from the side of Secret. I mean, already in the first minute of this game, things looking up for the side. Of the Dire and the fact that VP, they're going to need to do something big this game. The first game was kind of nothing short of a disaster here for the side of versus Pro. So, game two, they're going to need to step it up. And, and it's not going to be easy to do after a start like that. Bottom lane, seeing the Grave Chill onto Misery. He'll pop the sprint, trying to get himself away from FNG. And uh, Ruby can't quite find the range there for Telekinesis, so Misery's going to be fine. The Zeus pick was pretty unusual, though. Generally, you want like a physical damage dealing mid laner when you have Slardar on your team, but. Oh, Phobos again. It's training hits. They might just go for this here. Uh, they can't quite dive here with MP being a little bit too low on light. They've got to place his safe. He does have a manga ready. Phobos is just going to sail himself back up so he can stick in lane. And at the moment, as you said, G at the moment with a slight edge in terms of CS against Weeha Zeus. That's a little surprising considering the bottle start, but he's going to be completely okay. Let's see if he gets another rune and Phobos. No mana left. No boots. He might die here. Nah, he's got to be careful. This DD Zeus doing a lot against him, and we are just going to chase it down. Oh, he's, okay. He's going to give him some mercy here. So Phobos will be able to get away. We are wanting to just focus on getting himself back to mid. So. But nonetheless, it's going to force Phobos back to base, which in turn is just going to give Envy more and more space in this top lane to get the farm up on his gyrocopter. They have the early alacrity on Zeus too. Look at his damage. This is without like <laughs> really that much stats. No talisman plus alacrity. He's hitting for like 120. It's super hard outlast hit that. There's like almost no way you're gonna deny that as a Zeus. So expect to see us to be a little out of control. And it's gonna be interesting to see what G does with it. And the fact that we just don't see G Invoker that often. And uh, obviously pulling out at a point like this, this very important game for the side. I must have a lot of faith in it, and uh, so far in the mid lane, it looks to be on point in terms of finding the far. Misery, doing as he did in the first game here, just uh, making himself useful elsewhere across the map, as he wasn't having the best of time in lane. And I mean, surely this kind of does hurt the side of VP, the fact that there's no one in this off lane, and you kind of pick the Venge, surely, to get those early Well, they're trying to pick off Zeus. Lane. Zeus is very susceptible to ganks. Undying is kind of sitting in the same position that he was last game, but let's see, Vision... For Radiant, Vision for Dire, they looks it looks like they see. They see FNG at least. 
Yeah, let's see if they can get the lead in. G gonna go in with the cold snap, and that's gonna allow the snowball to follow through. Misery is there, gets the three man crush off here, and now they'll try and turn here. G with the damage from the Alacrity easy enough to bring down Weehar, not quite. And G, oh, they'll turn around, they'll get the invoker here. Misery moving forward for more. The crush again onto Phobos, and they only have the follow up damage, but nonetheless. Getting that kill onto G, and that was off the back of BP initiating, and as you said, just really nice awareness from Secret preparing themselves for the aggression of BP. They saw him, and you know, when your Zeus has vision of these two heroes, and you're not getting afraid of getting snowballed upon, you're, you know, you should be expecting another hero kind of sitting there, and they actually thought that they had vision. Oh, Tanaki needs to start to Weeha, he's fairly low as well, and this time, they're not taking down, BP getting themselves a kill on the board, and Weeha just a bit out of place there as he came back down in the middle of the river. Yeah, a little overconfident, maybe thinking that a Zebra Ward is going to protect them, but it didn't catch out the Rubik. I'm looking at the two safe lanes at the moment. How's Envy's farm compared to Illidan's? It's uh, pretty even at the moment. So both of the position ones getting space. But uh, again, kind of Illidan Venge, it, it's similar to kind of running a safe lane leaner in the sense that you've got a lot of single target damage and you want to be dealing with this gyrocopter before Envy gets the amount of farm that he got in game one. Mid lane, just bursting down Dream. They'll drop the Doomstone as well, and Pilot I just waltzing in. Just forcing the Evoker back out of the lane, and allowing Weeha to catch back up in terms of farm here with the Arc Lining spam. And same thing coming up from Misery, stack up the yeah. Ancients, Foral, the Gyrocopter, and Misery is actually really good at just moving around a lot early. Slaughter is kind of... Oh, look at this snowball in again, but Misery gets in range, gets the double cross off the Sunstrike, will connect onto Weeha, but they'll just turn, looking for G, Weeha will go down, they will get the G kill in return, so you can try to move forward from more, there's still a glimpse available on Puppy, and there we go, bringing back Phobos here, they'll get the follow-up crush here, and they should be able to get the Phobos kill as well, so a two-for-one trade, once again for Secret in the mid lane, and, and VP just can't come out on top in terms of these skirmishes. Just the Slaughter is in. always there to counter yeah. after the snowball. He He's also really good about his position. He doesn't get hit by the snowball, but he's still close enough to follow up with a two-man crush after it. And Slaughter might actually be a decent first phase man versus, uh, versus Secret because of the way they play this. He's so effective even if he doesn't isn't able to stay in lane, as opposed to like the offlane Tusk, who had some difficulty last game and a lot of difficulty in this early game and isn't able to connect on a relatively easy to gank hero like the Zeus. And now he's going to be level 6 pretty soon and they have a lot more firepower to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, the Misery just uh, is having a much faster paced game than in game 1, even yeah. though the offlane still isn't going great for him. The fact that he's finding these kills mid, you know, he's level 4 6 minutes in. In game 1, he was only level 2 at 6 minutes. And uh, we, we already saw how much he could do, even with that slow start in game one. So having that kind of quicker boost, and as you said, closing in the level six quicker, uh, it's going to be pretty terrifying for VP to fight into. And this is kind of the weakness of VP's draft last game and this game. It's like, okay, we don't really care if you're Vengeful Spirit free farms. We don't really care if you're Lena free farms because we have better late game and we're going to dominate the other sides of the map. If it were something like a Spectre or an Anti-Mage, you'd be like, oh, oh crap, we can't let him get a fast Radiance or a fast Battle Fury, but it's like, it's just a Venge. You're not worried about the late game. Oh, what's up, Lane? The wave coming in. Vopos has to be very careful here. And looks like Puppy yeah, can't feel that he can get a potential glimpse off, so he's gonna back up and... Now we're gonna see the side of VP this time, try and react to this. But it's gonna be a hard fight to take. You've got level 7 on the gyrocopter. He has picked up the helm as well, so he's got that extra tank ability. Uh, it's gonna be a hard kill, and... Well, they're gonna commit themselves quite a bit to it here. We'll, we'll see if they do find anything but secret. It's pulling the wave back, playing it safe. So VP, they're going to have to move in quite aggressively if they want to try and actually catch out any of the heroes on the side of Secret. Let's see if anyone from Secret comes out that a little bit too far. As I would love to find the swap, but it's just not happening. And Secret are playing this very, very safely, Ben. Yep, smoke's almost out. Good read by Secret. And you can... They know that VP's pressure. They're pressured to make moves because of the a safe lane Venge. Safe lane Venge not farming. Expect a gank in one of the other lanes. Weeha sits at his tower in the mid. All three heroes sit at the tower in the top. And they even expected, like, a smoke into a place that was ever ward into the top gank. So, the, I mean, Secret is just super prepared for this early game. Yeah, I mean, one of the synergies as well that we didn't really mention, but the fact that you've got... That Thunder Girls Wrath there to get the vision for Puppy to get the glimpses out. And, oh, we're going to see a swap on the Puppy now. And with the Sun Strike and the Telekinesis holding him in place, uh, they do end up finding themselves a nice pickup. Secret, maybe contemplating going in. There is a Haste Rune here on Weeha. Uh, he's got to be careful of the Magic Missile from, from Illidan and the Chain Stun. 
if they followed through with the snowball or the telekinesis. So he plays it safe. And that's VP getting themselves a kill on the board and slowly closing the gap and the lead that Secret has created here in the early game. But the Vengeful Spirit is just a Vengeful Spirit at the end of the day, yeah. already 600 net worth behind the Gyrocopter who has this ancient stack available to him in the later game. So this, you know, you have to be like really far ahead of uh, really far ahead of the opposing carry if you want to succeed as the Vengeful Spirit, unless everyone else is doing pretty well. I guess G's has his Midas already, so he's actually doing pretty nicely in the mid lane. Although you would hope that he would be further ahead versus Azus. And I think, as, as you were saying with Avenge as well, the fact that in terms of farm potential, the Jar is always going to be ahead. There's no way they're going to go from farm as quick as he is, unless he's farming kills. We'll bring back Puppy. They'll be the glitz back on FNG, but they've still got the telekinesis, followed up by the burst from Visage. They'll get themselves one kill here. Money to get himself out, though, and FNG could be trouble. Well, this cooldown from Envy's beautiful. Hits onto three with the rocket barrage. They'll find Illidan as well as FNG. They'll look for Lil. Can he get himself out? No! The Thunder God's wrath there from Weeha. No mercy spared as he picks up a double kill. This is like exactly the same thing from last game, where they just get destroyed by the early. Uh... Call down from Jarakovsar again connecting on three heroes. Yeah, this has been exactly the kind of play that you'd expect to, to see coming out in this patch when you run the Jarakopter. Just turning up to these early fights, you know, 10 minutes in, the fact that EE, four assists and one kill. He's been very mobile across the map and he's still maintaining the fact that. He's uh, very close to the net worth of, of an invoker that he's running with the Midas, and, and that has been given a lot of space in the mid lane. And it looks like EE going again for the. HOD build, yeah. so many Ancients available to him, it's actually kind of crazy. They do have a lot of good setup for the uh, Sun Strike though. Venge Stun, Lift, even Visit Burst can be used, Snowball, so pretty much all of their heroes. And there we go, clearing this up. Doesn't need the life still there because of the fact that they're undying this Tombstone. The zombies tanking up the Ancients, they'll be able to clear this and... Got money in the bank. Phobos here with an Invis rune. Can he go for the solo? Nah, that's entry. He's been rumbled. Misery just pops down the amplifier to give him the heads up that he knows he's there. And it really is going to all be down, I feel, at this point to G. There was a lot of pressure on G um, in the first game to perform on the Shadow Fiend, and he just had a really hard time just playing it up against Puppy's Visage. And Wasn't it? VP yesterday that had like a reserve reward over here and they kind of jacked the ancients. Yes, and they yeah. kept coming back to fight for it. And this game, and I mean, they're, they're just not doing it. Even after the game one, where they saw how far DE got, they're just kind of prioritizing other things on the map, which, you know, in the long term can can evidently from game one's performance co performance cost them a lot. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't go for that same method. I think it was versus uh, Shiki's TA that kind of had to rely on that ancient stack to catch up, but yeah, they kind of just let it go for free. Not even observer ward on the high ground, no observer ward on the left side, no aggressive smokes. This is not the same that same VP that we're used to seeing. Uh, it certainly is surprising, but uh, as we said, maybe G can do some magic yeah, with the invoker when he picks up. In terms of his farm, it looks like he is going to go for that pushing build here. Got the old Necros. They have to win team fights early. You can't go for a super late game build with the yeah. Invoker. You have to win the mid game fights. Okay. And uh, here we go from the side of Secret. Moving forward, we'll see if VP are going to be prepared for this one. And we've got FNG on the sidelines here. He's going to dispel the smoke onto Puppy, and he just TP straight out. Realizes this is not the place to be. Glimpse back onto Lil. They'll try and burst out Puppy, but he can go to the corner. Even with the Sinister Strike, it's not enough to kill Puppy. They've found one. They're going to find Illidan as well. Two clean pickoffs here for the side of Secret. And now they'll look to take the tier one. They may even be able to get the familiars here as well. And oh, those familiars, they only just got resummoned. So now no familiars for 160 seconds. Really painful here for the Passage. Wow, I can't believe Secret like moved to the left side. If they had just ran straight through the mid lane, it would have smoke popped, Observer Ward would have seen it, and then they would have just all gotten out. But it's actually crazy how the Secret skirted around that. And VP it seemed like they anticipated that. Well played. And does Secret anticipate this? The smoker from VP themselves. Looking for the wrap wrap, but there's going to be back up here for Secret. We are turning up as well. The Sunstrike coming down onto Puppy. They'll kill him this time. Telekinesis now onto Pilot Dive. VP moving in. Misery and Reha coming in for the sidelines here. 
They do need Envy to turn up to this fight if they want to try and turn him. Looks like VP will come out on top in. They find one kill. They get themselves a tower. Mitch is trying to move back in. And here's Envy again with the cooldown. It's going to connect up to Lil and Illidan. Highlight I drops the tombstone for the sidelines. And Illidan, he should go down and he will. Killing spree now for Envy. And now they're trying to chase down for more. G trying to get himself out with a slow from the zombies, keeping him at bay. He pops out the neck race, trying to turn. Telekinesis is not the pilot die, but it doesn't matter. Double kill for We Are. Misery crushes down onto FNG's Rubik. And they lose the disruptor, but take four kills yet again. And Secret continuing to dominate the series as a whole. And BP, oh, they, they didn't have their Wii picks this morning, Ben. <laughs> the tombstone call down, this is just too much for them to handle. And I mean, at this point, they they have worse late game and they're losing their early game. So they kind of just have to outplay Secret in these team fights, but it's just so damn hard. I mean, in terms of kind of playing from behind as well, what, what is the backup plan for VP with the kind of lineup that they have? Because I really feel when you run a core vengeful spirit, she's not you really the comeback carry. You she? need Roche. I think yeah. that's one of the benefits of having a vengeful spirit on your team and maybe a lot of split push with a BOT, Necro 3, Invoker. Those are kind of what you're hoping for in the mid game to get you by. But honestly, they have to win the team fights. Like, they. They aren't able to kill anyone really quickly. I guess they got a disruptor, but if the Undying stays alive and is just able to drop multiple decays and the Tombstone, they don't really have that great of a lineup to kill the Tombstone, especially in a, like a heavily fogged area like that, they're, they're going to keep losing them. So I don't know. They, they can't just eliminate people quickly enough in the team fights. I think that Pilot Eye has been playing really well in the Undying too. He always soul ripped the target anticipating the Sun Strike, and they were able to save Puppy on the bottom gank because of that. So as long as they have like good stick usage, good soul rip usage, and good positioning, they should kind of edge out VP in each of these team fights. Well, let's see what the plan is from VP. They're just getting the push on on the top lane, trying to take some more towers down. They've got more money in the bank. Got Lil hanging around the sidelines as well, but uh -oh. Oh, secret. misery has his blink. That's, yeah. that's really bad, and they have a reserve reward over here. And I think VP realized the fact that Secret are all off the map at the moment. They can't push out too far, and yeah, Misery just revealing himself top as well, so... VP making a greater call. The question is if they want to try and go back in here. Lil, uh -oh, they see Lil. Side. They have the vision for Glimpse if he stays around. I mean, this is what VP needs to do at the moment. If they're able to play it safe, kind of pull Secret around the map, you know, reacting to the, the pushes of VP, they can buy space and time here for G to get the farm he needs on his Invoker. And uh, he is slowly getting there. I mean, he's keeping up with Envy's farm on the Gyrocops, and this is a Gyro that's had three kills and eight assists. So, with the Midas, it is. It's working out here for G, but they've still got a long way to go before they're on top of Secret again. I mean, in terms of the overall difference in net worth, it's hovering around just over 4k, but it is starting to kind of even out. <laughs> and we are having a little bit of fun here. And, uh, okay, they're going to go in. Now to VP. What's the plan here? You've got Illidan at the moment on the top lane. TPs are coming out to the mid lane, so they send some things up, and understandably so, with the lineup of Secret, they know that they've got the tools to take it down fairly quickly. The question is, do VP have the tools to fight? Throwing the shards here, Secret, they're going to disperse. They don't want to be caught grouped up. Up here on the high ground, grouping the first target, gets off the static storm here. Now, cooldown from Envy's going to be with. They've got a telekinesis from FNG. G moving in as well with the damage onto Envy. Envy trying to get himself over the high ground, but the Warriors punch is there. The solar submission as well, they'll actually find Envy as well. So, Puppy and Envy down. A very nice fight there for VP and Secret getting rumbled and here comes VP with the cleanup into the Roshan pit. They'll take down the Tombstone with the damage that G's got here with the Forge Spirits. I don't know if Secret can recontest this here. Misery's trying to go back in with the crush, but the swap's done beautifully done by Illidan. They'll get Misery, they will lose the Vengeful Spirit, but space and time created as Virtus Pro take Roshan, get the Aegis onto Invoker, and they'll get themselves out as well. Very nice fight there from VP in the pit. Holy cow, I did not expect that sort of reaction coming out from VP. They were there, they all TP'd at the same time, and that call from VP was, was incredibly well-timed. And they didn't have the positioning advantage. VP kind of filed down this cliff and only got hit by like a one-man static storm and were able to kind of dissect Secret, even with the uh, cliff tombstone advantage. But the Necro Book is really strong in these team fights, and Secret without BKBs are still somewhat vulnerable to the damage coming out. Absolutely, I mean, as you said, and the fact that G's gonna have the Necro 3 out next time with him. Level 12 as well, so these Forge Spirits certainly packing a punch in these fights, and whether it's taking down Roshan or just locking down onto one of the heroes on the side of Secret, that's gonna do a lot. We can see Envy at the moment trying to work towards his S and Y now on top of the helm. 
There we go, level three Necro book here for the Invoker. And uh, VP are not going to make this win as easy as game one was for Secret. They're going to do their best to try and turn the series around. Snowball in, but Puppy's already laid down the static storm. Is the Sunstruck enough? No, it's not. How many creeps around? Phobos is going to run away, but there is the glimpse back here into the kinetic field. I'll be getting incredibly low, but they'll get Phobos. No backup here from the side of VP, and Secret will be able to get the play clean pick off. He was like way in the middle of creeps, too. Like, even if he didn't drop the Static Storm, I think that's a very low percentage kill, as long as there's creeps to split the Sun Strike. And VP now are going to try and do something here, even without Phobos. I mean, they've still got a very... They know the Tombstone's down. That's pretty yeah. good for them. Not worth sacrificing Tusk's life for, but you take what opportunities you can get. Uh, if they get the swap, I think Pi's dead, then they do. Straight up, Telekinesis, so the damage from Jizu, too much. Puppy coming in with the magic missiles there as well, and he's just going to melt. Double kill for G. They will lose Zealand and his Misery's joined the fight. We are trying to turn around with the Outlining Spam and the MVs there on the high ground. Then the Ghost comes out, FNG earning himself up. Is he still going to go down? The homing missiles coming in. Looks like FNG will die here, but now they're trying to trap a Wee Heart. They get a solar submission. Crush from Misery, they will finish off G. G with the triple kill at the moment. They can he get himself out of this one. The Familiar's coming back in. They do have stuns available. Yeah, G gets off the Ghost Wall. So they do have yet yeah, another very nice fight there for the side of VP. They may lose the Aegis, they lose both Illidan and FNG, but the fact that G picks up a triple kill, he's now got 2.5k gold in his bank. Maybe the Invoker, you know, there's a reason why it was drafted here, and VP have something special up their sleeves with G's players here, because uh, so far he's been on point in these team fights. Ooh, going with the Blink Dagger next. Yeah, he, he has been really spot on in doing the damage. I think he does like so much damage combined with uh, the Avenger Aura for his Necro books. It's actually crazy. And with Alacrity, and on top of that with the Wave of Terror, people are just melting. Slaughter is not that tanky. Not really that much armor on the side of uh, the Dire side. I know we go top lane, VP. They're gonna go for a push, and they should make very short work of this tower. Yeah, Secret haven't been able to get like the ideal team fight uh, ever since that Roach fight. Do you want like Tombstone in a great position? If they try and go in, then you kind of crush them with uh, Slithering Crush, and then you drop a Static Storm Kinetic Field after that with Zeus Soul to scout out all their positioning. But nothing's really been ideal for them after that. All these fights have been way too hectic, and VP kind of blindsiding them with their approach in some of these fights. And this, this could be a pretty big fight here. VP, uh, groups are ready with the push. Secret are going to respond here. It's going to be a question of who jumps in first. And well, Misery might do involuntarily as the swaps there into the stun. Static Storm is beautiful though. And here comes the MV with the wraparound. And oh my goodness, they get three there. Double kill for MV. Now it looks like they will just be able to get a little up. But no, he still goes down. Sorips there. Four heroes down on the side of VP. And a beautiful crush there from Misery, setting up a massive Static Storm from Puppy. Secret still showing the side of VP that they can very much come out on top of these team fights by a huge advantage. That's that's rough. That's so much damage coming out. Zeus and a crush already with a call down. They don't have a mech on the side of uh, VP. Maybe kind of waiting for that from Visage, but it's still a few hundred gold away from that. And they felt confident because of the last few team fights. But this time, no Aegis of the Immortal, no mech, and of course a much better executed fight from Secret where they're actually able to hit some of their AOE ultimates. So VP just hoping they could catch Secret. Again. Yeah, Benji, look at this, leading forward here. We're gonna bring back Jarakop. They've got the stun as well. Look at all these TPs coming through. Envy will get the cooldown though. Can he turn his down? There's Snowball there. He will find the kill onto FNG, but now with the punch from Phobos, they've got the slow out shards as well. Envy trying to turn around. Is he just gonna live here? He looks like he is with a soul repeal. He's gonna stay alive. They can't kill him. Double kill for Eternal Envy. And even with all the TPs in the world coming out from VP, they just couldn't kill him underneath their own tower. Wow, it actually was looking pretty good for BB. Oh, oh. oh misery with the crush on to two. Pylite die moving in with it again. The snowball will come out. Can they get everybody? Get the soul rip. Pylite die doing every kill. Everything he can to save Envy. They'll get Phobos as well. And just beautiful play here from the side of Secret. A such strike comes out. It nearly gets Puppy, but he's fine. He's going to be able to walk that one off. And my goodness, misery with these crushes. He's out doing himself, and there's a reason why they seem to just go for the slaughter for him time and time again. If it doesn't get banned out, they will take it for misery, and, and you will suffer for that if they let him have it. Three kills, 11 assists, and the crushes every single time just catching VP off guard. VP thought they could take that fight. It was like, okay, we have one hero there, we're gonna TP in with three, but they didn't count for the glimpse from Puppy. Puppy glimpsed back the Vengeful Spirit, and that's a lot of their damage. And then the other two TPs are taking like, you know, four or five seconds, and it's so hard for them to file in one like that. 
when you're kind of deal with like a heavy artillery from gyrocopter as well as like a low cooldown stun from the Sardar. So they just kind of filed into their death there. But you know, it's kind of what they were trying to do with the Roshan pit yesterday. It's like, <laughs> we'll throw enough bodies, eventually we'll win. They don't have that many bodies left to throw though. And indeed, having a look at the difference now in terms of gold, it's the swing back up for VP, but now straight back down to secret to ban. 10k lead leveling off at the moment. So VP certainly on the back foot here. Bihar's going to start working towards that acronym, and he's uh, fair bit of the way towards it at the moment. Um, I guess it will be those. Or do you think we can see Bihar picking up a Bloodstone or an Octarine first this game on the Zeus? Uh, yeah, I think Bloodstone's fine. Okay. Bloodstone's just generally much safer, especially when you're getting as many kills as as Secret is. Octarine is decent, but I don't know if he can uh, actually be able to dish out that much damage. He does die if uh, Invoker catches him. And look at this. Misery, just the master of stacks. Is he going to be able to get it off again? He is. And so much money here for E on the gyrocopter. Uh, this is absolutely disgusting. He's going to be so far ahead, and he's even found himself a DD. Going to make it that easier to clean up. And, uh, VP just trying to get their own ancients, but in comparison, it just looks so so shallow and hollow because EE picking up pretty much a quintuple stack here. So much farm now for the gyrocopter. 15k coming up in terms of net worth. Yeah, this is good information, though, for... Yeah. The other teams that are going to face the secret later on in this tournament is that they really utilize those ancient stacks and having to deal with those in some way, either dropping a sentry to block them, smoke gank, have a ward up here or on the left side. That has to be uh, has to be dealt with. Or just take down the T1 tower so you can potentially take it down themselves. But VP has, I don't even know if they like have an idea that they've been utilizing him so much. If they had time in between games, they could have watched the replay from game number one. But in this uh, back-to-back -back match, I, I, I highly doubt it. Yeah, I think if, I mean, any of the teams as well from this uh, tournament, if they're watching this game, you've got to you've got to deal with that. Yeah. You've got to know that they're always going to look for the ancient stacks. And I'm pretty sure as well, Secret, when given the option, they do prioritize the dire side. And you can see why they're just utilizing the stacks to, to a T and the fact that they can go for those Roshan attempts with Misery Slada. Yeah, and on the Radiant side, it's not as easy because no. if you stack, you can't really protect mid as easily, which is what he was doing in the early game to counter the Snowball ganks. So the Dire plus Slaughter is not only for the Roche, but because of the mid to Ancient rotation that Misery has been oh, utilizing so we well. Here we go, Misery. Boom, jumps in with the Telekinesis from FNG. Beautiful reactions. Static Storm's down there. They've got two shots in for VP, and Envy moves in. The cooldown's dropped. <laughs> Through this fight. He turns around for Wave of Terror. G trying to do what he can with the Kesmini, but it doesn't matter. Triple kill for a godlike Eternal Envy Gyrocopter, and VP can't get anything in return. Envy is godlike. This is, this is crazy hit. 12 kills, 11 assists, 1 death. He's been involved in 23 of the 29 kills for the side of Secret. This is, this is Gyrocopter played to perfection here. Yeah, really, the cooldowns have been so incredibly good for them, but of course, help from the rest of his teammate to set up. Everyone's locked in place with Kinetic Field. People are getting Sildenin Crush, multiple heroes. And there we go. Using the Dire Advantage, they'll take the Roshan. And uh, VP still with three members just respawning. Uh, there's only way they can get here in time. Damage is going to be too much. Going to be able to get themselves the Aegis in the next fight. Going to be even harder for VP, and we're seeing them time and time again take these engagements and lose numerous heroes and find nothing in return. And the draft from FNG, I, like, I think if they play like they did yesterday, where they five man a lot earlier and do a little bit more solidly in their lanes, they can get away with a position one Venge or Alina, but this game, like, they didn't, the lanes didn't go as well as they expected, which then transitions you into this weird, awkward mid lane phase where it's like, okay, we have to take team fights. Rest in pieces here. We'll get the telekinesis stun on to Misery. Uh, that's not going to be enough. Misery catches him out. Zeus. But they're forced the in this, like, really awkward position where they have to force unnatural fights and they're kind of caught out of position and, you know, diving more than they normally would and not really feeling comfortable in the farm for farm trade. And the fact the misery now with the butterfly, they're going to be ready to try and push up to the high ground potentially. He's an Axe on G, so we'll see what he can do in terms of the combos. It's going to oh, be no. hard against this lineup. Obo's got glimpsed out. This is going to be a 45 at best for oh. VP. Uh, he just goes up to the high ground. Fortification will come out from the side of VP. They're going to have FNG back up here as well for this defense. But they've got to look for a perfect fight here. Otherwise, this could be a 
Easy set of racks here for the side of Team Secret. That's going to be the tier three gone. FNG steals the homing missile. He'll just send it out here onto Jara. Paladai drops the tombstone. They'll be able to take that one out as well. I'm just waiting it out here. Illidan is looking to see if he can get a swap onto anyone. And Khan at the moment, Envy coming back in here, pops the BKB and just goes the cooldown. It's going to heal to FNG, FNG's going to fall incredibly fast here, he'll go down. Illidan's going to be caught out by Misery, they'll find the bench as well, and he's just moving forward, looking for more. The damage is too much, Phobos might just go down, but no, the deafening blast, pushing back Gyro, and they're going to lose the Aegis here on Envy. But they've already found two kills, Puppy taking a lot of damage from the Soul Assumption, the Soul Rip healing back up, oh, the Force Dump across the Sunstrike, playing with death there, Puppy. And they'll look for the racks now. Three heroes left on the side of BP. What can they do? Misery. I guess the blink cancelled here. They're just sort of losing the damage here in Jaros. Go for the racks. Trying to move forward here with the familiars. I've got to be careful of the stuns just in case it sets up a combo here for G. Now Misery jumping into Lil who gets Kalimus back and beyond godlike now for Envy. The familiar stuns come out but it's nothing more than just a, a bit of an irritation here for Secret as they'll find the full set of racks. And there's nothing that VP can do. They're going to have Illidan back online. FNG TPing him very aggressively, but he gets crushed straight away. Weeha's there as well to burst him down. And FNG getting deleted again from the fight. Ooh, okay, Glimpse back onto Illidan. And he's going to be sent back to base. And now Weeha getting low. Oh, he's going to use the Bloodstone Suicide. Cooldown's been dropped onto G. They did manage to force Weeha out, but he's only going to be down for 14 seconds. And he's, uh, yeah, he brought up the boost to travel as well before he did so. So he's going to be able to return straight to the fight here on the, on the Zeus. And VP, I mean, they're making it hard for Secret, but Secret, they're still feeling fairly confident. Misery moving forward. Illidan hasn't got a swap for 15 seconds. And there's still a, an FNG Rubik down, and there we go. Secret will finish off the racks, and I don't know if people will be able to find anything on the retreat. Six seconds to swap, but oh, trying to go back in, and there we go. Just smoke it up to get Misery in for the blink, and Static Souls be dropped as well. Phobos is down. BKB from Envy as he moves in on to Lil. Lil will be able to read some of the familiars, but Visage is down. They'll throw out the stuns. It's a triple kill for Envy. And at this point, Ben, I don't know what the plan is here for VP, because I don't think there's going to be a plan big enough to save them from this, this situation they're in. Massacred inside their own base. Yeah. And they, they, they really don't have anything left at this point. It's... It's just a overall rough series from VP. I mean, I'm not sure. It's not the same team and lack of teamwork. No good. Or uh, their early game was just super weak. But at the same time, Secret I think played really well around it. Just sacrificing, just letting the position one farm and taking five v four on opposite side of the map, as well as Misery and Pi really helping out that middle lane, making sure that it goes really well for we. I think that the supports actually on Secret played exceptionally well this game. Pilot Eye on Undying, healing up a lot. It's kind of hard to see his effects, but his Tombstone placement has been really good, as well as his uh, four staffs and his defensive soul rips. And Puppy with his glimpses this game have been yeah. really, really incredible. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems today so far from Secret, there's just not a weak link. They're just playing perfectly as a team, everyone outperforming themselves. And it's just too much for VP. VP just don't know how to deal with the play style of Secret, it seems, this morning. And... And Secret at the moment, I mean, the gold lead is over 25,000 now, 31 minutes in. It's bordering on the 1k a minute, which is uh, that point where the game is nearly statistically <laughs> impossible to turn around. Is Misery getting an Octarine? <laughs> I think he might be. Huh? Talking about six second stun <laughs> or six second cooldown with two and a half seconds stun. That's uh, pretty terrifying, especially with how well Misery can use him. And the fact that what we've got Pilot Die, he's going to be working on an Aghanims. MV now with an MKB as well as the Butterfly. It's not looking great for VP. I mean, what, what do they have? I, mean, I guess they've got G with the combos. But they've just not been flashy enough in these fights. And, and Secret just play around it, of course, having the BKB on MV and closing the gap and, yeah. and just killing G before he can do anything of, of any great kind of disaster. It's just Secret. one BKB, though, so maybe that can kind of help them out. But Pilot I already in... Uh... Prime position to oh, thwart yeah. this maneuver. Oh, that's a lovely swap onto Envy. Can they burst him down? Yes, they can. Envy's down for the count. 80 seconds. They get the static storm off. FNG being kept alive. He will still go down. There's Snowball closing the gap onto Misery and Pilot. Won't be able to quite cash to the starter. There's your Thunder Ghost Wrath coming out. We push from the sidelines. They might be able to find more. Magic Missile's going to connect onto Weeha. They're moving in. They're going to have the damage here to bring him down. Solar Crystal being popped out by Puppy, but it's not enough to save him. Invoker ending the killing spree, getting the gold.
They lose FNG, but they find two massive kills then. A very nice fight from VP, showing us that even at over 25k deficit, they're still in this. And Phobos, well, that snowball, unfortunately, was uh, heading, of course, for, I believe, Pi as he TP back to base, and it dragged him in. Wow, that was, like, the sickest of initiation I've seen. He swapped him into a deafening blast as his blast was traveling. There's yeah. no way you can BKB out of that if the... Uh... <laughs> that's, that's actually crazy. You don't expect that. You only expect that if you think there's a hex on the side of VP, maybe even a telekinesis, but the blast was actually incredibly well-timed and great initiation by VP. Secret War prepared for it too. They expected a smoke rotation either from the mid or from the, from the top side. I mean, yeah, VP can continue to do that and just take out the jar at the start of the fight. So Unfortunately, they're going to have to make a move before the next uh, Roshi and Respawn. It's going yeah, to respawn what, in just a, a couple of minutes. minutes at this point. So if they get another Aegis on to the Gyrocopter, it doesn't really matter how many fancy moves they can they can pull. They just won't have the ability to do it twice in the same team fight, Unless Envy gifts them, as he so often does. Uh, DD being spotted out as well here. I'll give that over to Jaro. Envy's going to grab that one here. And uh, I mean, as you said, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Secret do look for the fights there off, off of the back of that bad one without the Aegis, so or if they are going to waste it out. But it looks like they're happy, still being positioned fairly aggressively. But I know that that fight was only lost because they did get caught out by VP. If Secret can look to initiate the fights themselves, they should be fine. This uh, pretty much does rest on Envy getting the BKB out. And uh, this Blink Dagger on the Jara, that's a, a bit of a novel one, Ben. Yeah, I guess maybe the counteract the swap, but if it if he gets a uh, if he gets lifted or blasted during it, then it's not really going to do that much. And here we see a unusual pickup from the position one. He's actually eighth in net worth on the bench, and he's forced to go into this like odd conglomerate of builds, <laughs> treads, brazier, pipe. And we can see VP there looking for something from the hide lines, but now yeah, this ward. And kind of spot it all out, and yeah, I think VP realized a secret backup. How can we also find anything from this vantage point? And I can just back up and look elsewhere. Secret, they're not done. They want to do something, and they want to do something big. They want to try and close this. And there we go, Thunder Ghost Raft to give the vision. Uh, they don't want to jump in that deep by the looks of it. In fact, they're looking to make a beeline round sneakily, straight through the, through the side doors here at the base. And uh, Envy's going to reveal himself out. The question is, the VP try and fight into this? They're going to fall for this bait, and it doesn't look like the world. They'll play it safe, hugging the Ancient, so Secret won't be able to find anything here with this smoke. Regeneration. Regeneration. Oh, chicken on the side of Dire scouts out the Aegis and Cheese, and with VP pent up in their base, I believe with no smokes left to their name, it should be pretty easy for them to take this one out. Yeah, the Blink Dagger, it, it is pretty strange. I don't think he would have gotten it if there weren't a Venge in this game, though. But ideally, you have Force plus Solar plus Glimmer to even prevent him from dying to that sort of jump. And there we go. Aegis now on Jaria. This is when we're going to see Secret come out of the push. We've seen how they were even just looking for fights without it. The fact that they have now got it as well. There's no reason for these guys to hold back. Cheese on Misery on that Slada, so he's going to be ready to jump straight into the base. Go a little bit more aggressive. Not that he hasn't been already, of course. Five kills, 18 assists, only died the once. And uh, this is going to be kind of nice for them as well here. So we'll see if they're able to catch anyone out with this. Things coming out to the top lane, as we can see G with the Forge Spirits just trying to get the creep momentum back, favoring the side of the Radiant. He's checking for the vision here. Weeha is going to be able to get the D ward. Actually helped out here by Misery. And at the moment, VP just playing this very safe, keeping the cells in the base, knowing the pickoff potential of Secret is incredibly strong. And just kind of waiting for Secret to come for the high ground pushes. We saw already they gave a fairly decent fight at the bottom. They did still lose it, though. But maybe now with G, as he gets a few more levels, he's saving up a lot of money as well. Depending on what his next big item pickup is, they might have the means to deal with Secret's high ground push. They're just not that farmed. It's just, what, Invoker who's kind of in that sea of red, but even Puppy is richer than the than the Ventral Spirit at this point. Doesn't hit very hard. There we have it as well, as you said, Ben. The pickup for Misery. He's going to be able to get this Amplifies out every 3.75 seconds, the six <laughs> second crush. 100% uh, uptime eff effectively on the sprint. So, maybe a bit of a clowny answer, but a 
But Misery knows what he's doing, and I'm sure he's feeling very confident at the moment. I mean, we've seen Misery, I think in a four star is really all this man needs to make thing happen, things happen in this game. Whatever he got on top of that is is normally almost just luxury items here for the slaughter. It's almost permanent off time on sprint. Yep. Gotta go fast. And honestly though, it's... I think it's, it's it's pretty decent if you need the extra lockdown. Although generally you'll be in a situation where you need BKB a little bit more, or AC adds more to your team fight. But with a Zeus on your team, you don't really need the extra physical damage because he outputs enough of his own, and he can get an Octarine later. So it's it's good for extra control in the team fights, especially if you need the force staff to uh, save your teammates. And there we go, blinking forward, Envy. The teasing here with versus Pro. Secret coming in with backup. Another look to try and wrap around. The Creepway pushing in on the mid lane. And be ready to just frontline it and start to take down the tier three. Glimpse back onto FNG. There's nothing spectacular though, and FNG will be able to nab himself the glimpse. So he may be able to use it in return against the side of Secret if anyone's kind of left out of position. Tombstone's been dropped. He'll get taken down straight away, but so will the tier three as Envy just clears that up with a huge amount of damage that he's surmounting now. FNG's kind of daring Misery to jump him. He already has telekinesis kind of precast on him in case he blinks in, and then he'll drag him to his team, so Misery doesn't really want to take that bait unless he's approaching from the fog. Oh, there's the swap, the blast as well, going on to Envy, but he does of course have that Aegis, even though they can the four stars saving Envy. Misery might get caught out though, he does of course still have that cheese, and he'll leave it straight away. Snowball following through here, Jaren moving in close with the rocket barrage, the soul root keeping him alive, Envy will finally go down. The Aegis is lost, but so's a lot of the health for the side of VP. They've got to get themselves out of this one. Tornado will hold Envy back, Illidan taking down very low they'll lose the eventual spirit. FNG's gonna get the mini glitters back and yeah, blink four from Envy. They'll finish that one off as well. Killing spree for Puppy, a buyback straight away from FNG. A VP will lose the mid racks to Secret. And it looks like they won't be able to do anything in return. Second set of racks down on the side of the Radiant. And Secret just maintaining their advantage here. And and VP struggling to turn it. Misery moves in with the crush on tap and G. The follow-up damage is there. They've got a deafening blast coming out, but G himself, he'll fall down. Triple kill, ultra kill for Envy as he just waltzes around the base there with a the BKB. G's brought back, so's Lil on the Visage, but they just can't do anything to stop it at this point. Secret turn their attention towards the tier three. GG's called. It's all too much for VP and Secret winning the first series of the day, 2-0, and, and in a terrifying fashion as well, Ben. This is some top-class Dota 2. Yeah, some out economy in the first 10 minutes and then just straight out play after that. I think that the slaughter from Misery has been really incredible. <laughs> well, there we have it. The music kicks in and uh, Secret 